All right, let's settle in for some more Animal Crossing. And as always, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Let's unwind with a bit of this for a little bit. I changed the clock back because nighttime, as ideal as it is, it, it, for me, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, you know, it, I put it back 12 hours, so. Now at least I know what time it is, really, um, as it's just 12 hours behind. Okay, what did we get in the mail? Oh, it's from Gulliver, right, because we rescued him. The hot deserts of Egypt are hot. It's very rough on a poor seabird like me. My gift to you is one of the many pharaohs that sleep in the pyramids. Well, a replica. Wait a minute, do we? <laughs> I already have a, a... Well, I don't have a pyramid, I guess, but like... I guess if I could gift it to someone, I could gift it to Lucky. Oh no, but this is a nice closet. Oh, that's kind of nice. I'll get my pear one. Um, okay, hold on. Present. Okay, there it is. Open. Oh, you know, just, just a casual mummy's casket. What is, the, what is that ASMR soda drinking? What is on TV right now? That was really loud in my headphones. <laughs> it's just... Okay. Uh, I mean... Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> you can actually open... Wait, what? This is this is this is a storage closet? <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh anyway, I got stuff to sell. Alright, sure. I, I I guess. Okay, let me get some stuff out. All this stuff has to be sold. So I have to do a little bit of back and forth to get started, as I have uh, some stuff that I didn't get to sell because I played at night time, and that was admittedly not the best idea. But I had to do it at least once, I guess, because uh, there are some fish that are exclusive to the nightlife. Was that a... No, it wasn't a big one. Alright, just checking. I just realized I've played nothing but Nintendo games tonight. Go. Lots of money, yeah. I keep forgetting to uh, take my 3DS as well, and as I'm watching stuff, shake it. Whoa, what's going on here? Something is coming. I don't know what that is. Welcome. Alright. She's warmed up to me. 
Also, hello, YNA Berry. Uh, that's hello in Korean, isn't it, if I'm not mistaken? But hello. Tee hee, Jesus. You've become fast friends with Will, haven't you? Lately, she's been all. Do you think Will will. <laughs> will will. <laughs> I hate it when this happens in a sentence. Will will. Do you think Will will come by today? There we go. She starts asking ab about that before we've even opened the store in the morning. Oh, Mabel. Ah, uh, hey, hey, come on. Well, it's always nice to see you. Aww. Okay, but I should probably buy some pants because wearing shorts in winter is probably not the best thing. Oh. Wait, don't I have... No, I have the... I think I have the top. Hang on. I think I have the top. Hold on. Let me go have a look. I need to go back home anyway to sell stuff. Or grab stuff to sell. Look at all my trees. I hope they don't get in the way of anything. <laughs> this thing is so silly. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know where it is. Instruction manual, trophy, sofa, bed, grass tea, hang on. Number one shirt. Did I sell it? Oh, don't tell me I sold it. Beaded shirt. I may have sold it. Ah. Oh. Didn't I have one, or am I not remembering correctly? I think I may have sold it. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's sad. Okay, well, uh... Okay. I guess I'll put it away. Now I know I have it. Uh, what else can I sell? This? I still have this lost item. <laughs> I never figured out who it was for. I think it's too late now. Okay. Very sad.
Wow, that wasn't as much as I thought it would be. I think that's it. I, I think I've sold most things. Maybe I'll pop into retail and sell some of the fossils I have, but... Other than that... I'm gonna get started on this. How did it get 500? I haven't donated to it yet. Unless the, uh, the villagers donate. Okay, uh... Okay, so the, the, there's a few more other things I can sell. Uh, is there anything that I should do with Sapphire, or is it just... Hang on. Just something I should sell. Sapphire. Let's see what it does. They can be sold or used in custom furniture at retail. Okay, I should probably hang on to it then. Yeah, furniture. Okay. I want furniture. I can start talking to people. Hello, sweetie. Nice day to get a few things done, isn't it? So, what did you want, sweetie? Let's just chat. Have you ever seen an aurora, sweetie? It's magical, and we may get one tonight. So keep your eyes open and count your lucky stars if we do get one. Oh, no. Are you telling me that there was the benefit to playing at night time tonight? <laughs> I just swapped the clock back. Ah. Oh. Hey, 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 Will, it's the perfect weather for chilling outside. Seriously, ow. Anyway, did you need something? Let's talk. I messed up and bought an extra paperweight, but now there's a rumor going around that I have a world-famous paperweight collection. The rumors really can spiral out of control, don't you think? Ow. <laughs> I just love that he ends his sentences as an ow now. Just made him sound like he's in a state of pain constantly. See, I've learnt since then. We just we just move you. It's all good. <laughs> Can't 
kind of, I kind of see why they changed it. It's a bit weird that a shovel destroys a flower instead of unearthing it. Ah, this thing. Okay, since I'm here... Get back. Welcome back, Gammy. How's the snack? What'd you get? I guess I can only put one more item. You know what? If someone wants to be a colossal colossal pain they'll have to pay 5,000 bells let's just see if it happens okay but I mean the new building's appearing so that's nice you had a chicken salad and a few muesli bars damn that's healthy um I guess I had a pretty healthy dinner I had uh I went out and got some poke which is like I guess it's like a Hawaiian salad, sort of. I'm sure Lello would correct me if he was here. <laughs> but I had it with soba, soba noodles, so like, it's like a fancy noodle salad. It was great. It had edamame, seaweed, uh, salmon, some shrimp. Uh, what else? Oh, like crab salad, but I guess the fake kind. Not real crab, but still tastes good. Uh, wonton crisps, which are pretty nice. Cucumber as well? Yeah. I didn't do it quick enough. That's good stuff. Today is Anacotti's birthday. Wow, like, oh wait, 24th. No, that was yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. Whoops. Well, I mean, whoops. No, wait, it is today. It is today. It is today. It's cool. What's up, Rerack? So, is there something you need from me? On um, chat. No, Frigga, right? What's the deal exactly? We don't really interact, so I'm thinking I should break the ice and uh, talk to her sometime. I can tell she's a good person just by looking at her re-rack. Re-rack? Re-rack? Like... I don't understand some of the the things that uh, they say at the end of their sentences. I'll give her one of these bovoid things. Let's go visit Anakoti. Yeah, I got my bottle of water. I need to drink more. I'm so glad you showed up. It wouldn't be the same without you. 
<laughs> Don't just stand there like a bump on a log. Come on in, Will. I forgot that I changed to hello to be that. Just to celebrate little old me, I feel like special galantown. So, not to be rude or anything, but did you happen to bring me a gift? Yes. Oh wait, I might have to wrap it. I know this. Yeah. Teehee, I was just thinking the other day how it would be so nice to get something like this. I'm a lucky girl to have such a generous friend. Thanks again. <laughs> I, l I love that they're all whistling Funky Town when they're happy. We're having a birthday party for Anacotti today. Let's get this place pumped up. <laughs> I mean, it kind of overlaps, but... I think this is great. I wish I could do the same thing. Alright, I gotta go. That's too bad, but I'm like totally stoked you came. Thanks for the super often gift too, it just made the list of my top 10 best gifts ever. Okay. How do I... I'm good at give present. I guess now I just smack random rocks. I guess I'll go sell the other stuff while I'm at it. Oi! So you want to talk to me? What's the latest? You out shopping today? Excellent. Well done. That's, uh, that's the conversation I wanted to have. Whoa! I don't know what was so expensive in that, but... so expensive in there. There's still one more fossil to find, but since I'm here... Oh dear, pardon me. Welcome to the Oh Yes Museum. I'll read it every now and then. <laughs> I really couldn't think of a better town name, so, you know, we'll stick with that. Only one? More duplicates. Yeah, oh, that's actually not too bad. Alright, fine. Only one duplicate. Okay, I got one more thing to sell. I can't believe I don't have any more tools yet, like... Is this different? That it just takes ages to get tools? Or am I just playing <laughs> in the incorrect days or something?
I feel like at this point I should have more tools, I don't know. But I guess I'm just basing that off uh, what I had in New Horizons at this point. Alright, we'll do some fruit picking, but just... First I want to have a look around for the other fossil. I have too many trees, I want to chop some of them down. Oh! Is that gold? Or sapphire? It's gold! Alright. Wait, not sapphire, what's the other one? Topaz. Topaz, I think of Topaz. I guess I might be at capacity with the town as well. No one else has moved in. What is this? Fancy display stand. Yeah, okay. If you can play stuff on it, I'm all, I'm all for it. Just put something weird in the middle of my home. I guess it depends how strict it is with it. Oh, hello. I mean, that's nice. I got a refund. Okay, let's see how this looks. So can I, can I play stuff on it? I can. Okay, so I can display something on it. Like, I got I got a gold nugget. What else can I put on here? I wonder if I can do this, this would be funny. Okay, hang on. Yeah, there you go. My prized possession. The tumbleweed. It was handed down throughout my family. This looks so My house is just so dumb, if you look at it. I mean, I, I did make my house look nice in New Horizon, but I had a lot of furniture to work with. Right now, I don't really have much, so... We'll see if this tells a story. Working towards this. Right, let's do fruit picking now. It's a family heirloom, the uh the tumbleweed.
It's been in the family for six generations. <laughs> I almost feel like doing the, uh... The monologue from, uh... Christopher Walken, you know? The, the one where it's talking about the gold watch. What's, what's the, what's the monologue? Hang on. I want the, the Pulp Fiction monologue. I just want, I want to be as accurate as possible. <laughs> Hello, little man. Boy, I sure have heard a bunch about you. See? I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that Hanoi pit of hell together over five years. Hopefully you'll never have to experience this yourself. But when two men are in a situation like me and your dad were for as long as we were, you take on certain responsibilities of the other. If it had been me who had not made it, Major Coolidge would be talking right now to my son Jim. But the way it turned out, is I'm talking to you. Butch, I got something for you. This tumbleweed I got here was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. It was bought in a little general store in Knoxville, Tennessee, made by the first company ever to make tumbleweeds. Up till then, people just carried tumbleweeds. It was bought by private doughboy Ernie Coolidge on the day he set sail for Paris. It was your great-grandfather's war tumbleweed, and he wore it every day he was in that war. When he had done his duty, he went home to your great-grandmother, took the tumbleweed off, put it in an old coffee can, and in that can it stayed until your granddad, Dane Coolidge, was called upon by his country to go overseas and fight the Germans once again. This time they called it World War II. Your great-grandfather gave this tumbleweed to your granddad for good luck. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man's. Dane was a marine, and he was killed, along with the other marines, at the Battle of Wake Island. Your granddad was facing death. He knew it. None of those boys had any illusion about ever leaving that island alive. So three days before the Japanese took the island, your granddad asked a gunner on an Air Force transport name of Winoki, a man he had never met before in his life, to deliver this to his infant son, who he had never seen in the flesh, his tumbleweed. Three days later, your granddad was dead, but Winoki kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father his dad's tumbleweed. This tumbleweed. This tumbleweed was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down over Hanoi. He was captured, put in a Vietnamese prison camp. He knew if they ever saw the tumbleweed, it'd be confiscated, taken away. The way your dad looked at it, that tumbleweed was your birthright. He'd be damned if they were going to put their greasy hands on his boy's birthright. So he hid it in the one place he knew he could hide something. His ass. Five long years. He wore this tumbleweed up his ass. Then he died of dysentery. He gave me the tumbleweed. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of, uh, barb something in my ass for two years. Then, after seven years, I was sent home to my family. And now, little man, I give the tumbleweed to you. Okay. You've never seen Pulp Fiction? You should. It's a good movie. Uh, I don't know. That probably wasn't as funny as I thought it was, but... <laughs> it's just... Uh... I could do an edit of that where just take the original footage and then anytime Christopher Walken is about to say watch, I just put my own voice. Tumbleweed. 
Anyway, like I said, that tumbleweed is sentimental, and that's why it's in my house. Lucky. You know, I, I've pretty much already seen all that OES has to offer, Will. That's why I'm thinking of moving someplace new. My plan is to leave on the 3rd of next month. What? I no, don't go. Wow, I didn't think you'd care that much. Well, if you really want me to stay in OES, then I will. Aha, aha, aha. Yeah, why would I move when I have great plans like you, Will? Yeah, don't, don't go. I know, I know I put, like, a booby trap outside your house, but, like... Don't go. <laughs> Who else is going to look like they're in writhing pain every time they exist? I'm going to miss that if you do go. Maybe I should have it like survivor style where if some villager wants to go, then I'll just put it to a vote. I'll just put it in the chat and be like, alright, vote. Should I allow this villager to leave or not? Go full democracy mode, kinda. It's too late now, but Lucky's not going anywhere. Maybe for the next one. Because I know there are some loyalties when it comes to certain villagers. There are favorites amongst people. I, I must have missed one somewhere. I should have I should have a stack of six. <laughs> Where did I miss one? Uh-oh. Did anyone notice if I missed one? I, I, I have I had to have missed one. I should have a stack of six, not not five. Oh wait, idiot. It's here. It's all good. Don't worry. In my defense, it is one in the morning, so the uh, midnight brain has kicked in. So there should be one more tree, I think. Here you go. Alright, we should cover it. Let's go sell it. That one. 
I, I gotta stop tapping with my thumb. Okay, well now that I guess I got the fossils out of the way, uh, I guess I should see what else I can do. I might go onto the beach and just pick up some shells for quick money. I think the the art is probably the hardest one to pull off because I just don't I just don't see red in town that often. I mean, even the New Horizons just that was the collection that I didn't really have many of because it just would rarely show up. I mean, is it a once a week thing or is it just random? But I, I felt like I just never ran into red. Oh, there's still more fruit trees? What? Guess I wasn't done yet. Okay, surely now that's all of them. Hi there, Will. Ready for another great day, baffle? What's on your mind? Let's talk. Don't you think laundry dried outside smells like the sun? <laughs> It smells so good, sometimes I'll fall asleep with my head buried in the laundry basket. Those are some shower thoughts right there. Um... Where's the other snowball? Okay, it's here. Alright, I can, I can pull this off. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Imagine if a beehive had dropped there. Alright, the snowman will... will live here. That should be big enough, I think. Okay, now... Get the tiny one. Thank you. 
Why is this taking so long? It's just me or the... Is this one not growing as quick as the other part? It's still too small. Don't get... Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't get... Move. Over here. Over here. Nowhere near it. I don't want any disasters. And no, our mayor has lost it. <laughs> Back? What did I say? No. No. You can you can see once it's built. Splendid, the heavy set body, this tightly packed head, and the solid stability created from uniting the two. I'm so pleased. Oh, observe, I'm perfect from every angle. As a token of appreciation for your making me so wonderful, let's play a game of bingo. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, well, no, you know what? Uh, I'm getting closer. I, if I get 31 or 14. Oh, oh, why? 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 <laughs> Hey, can I get your opinion on something, Will? Which snack do you think represents me? Oh. Wait, what? Chat, what the heck is this? What, what is this? What does this mean? It's, n it's not a, like... What? <laughs> on the scale of chocolate to pretzels... What snack represents me? What what does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? Like, let's say it's here. Yeah, it's I, I, am I just saying you're more of a chocolate than a pretzel, but are still somewhat a pretzel, or you're complete pretzel, but like, or you're perfectly in the middle. It's like, you know, you're equally, equal parts pretzel and equal part chocolate. <laughs> what a bizarre question. How would you even answer this? Oh man, I'm burping. This annoyed me so much that I burped when I drank my water. <laughs> Is the middle chocolate covered pretzel. I don't know. But then what would this be? Like, you're just not quite completely a pretzel. What would this be, really? I think it was like that pineapple watermelon drink that made me burp. <laughs> Sorry if you don't like burping. I'm usually better about it, but I think the anger and confusion. That was like a, a real Rick Sanchez moment. I, I need to just answer the question. I don't know, I guess you're a pretzel. Really? Does that mean you think I'm hard and brittle? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Some people like the salty snack. I had no idea you felt that way, Baffle. That's not how I felt. I'm bored. I picked up a diary that someone dropped the other day. I know I shouldn't have, but I picked inside. It said day one played a lot, day two played a lot, today too. Day three sure played a lot. And it was like that on every page. 
What's the point in keeping a diary like that? Is this just, like, one of these questions where I, w I was going to be wrong? Like, if I answered chocolate, was she going to be like, Oh, you, so you think I give people diabetes? How dare you! It's like, what? No! <laughs> what was the correct answer there? Living alone can get, well, kind of lonely, so it's great to have such friendly neighbours. Should have gone with lamb chop. It wasn't an option, like, on a scale of chocolate to pretzels, where is lamb chop? Also, who has a whole lamb chop as a snack? That's not a snack, that's a meal. It has to be the weirdest question I've ever seen. Well, that was a shape, right? Yeah, but snack. The question was, what snack... What snack am I reminded of when I think of this shape? So how is a lamb chop a snack? I don't know, I, I think it's one of those things that's hearty enough to be a meal. Even if you have one, I guess I would consider it more of a meal than a snack. Also, it, wouldn't it be a mutton chop and not a lamb chop? Because a lamb is a baby. And the moment it's not a baby, it's, it's a sheep and it's mutton. So it can't be a lamb chop. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's right. It's amazing how many people don't realize that lamb is a baby sheep. <laughs> I've had this conversation before. But th there's a disconnect there for sure. Oh, hello. What are you? Damn it, I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'm just no good at fishing. I'm doing something to test my reflexes at a time where my brain is like, no, please sh shut down. On a scale of chocolate to pretzels, what snack are you? So, I guess whenever that kind of question pops up again, I have to think of the worst possible thing that the food can remind you of. You don't like pretzels, so chocolate. Right. But would you make the connection that someone was calling you rigid and salty? What was it? It was like brittle and it was just... But... You're a Reese's take five bar, so you have both. What? I, okay, we don't have Reese's here. I'm looking this up. Reese's take five bar. What is this? Okay, they wait. They sell it here in Australia. Where? Oh, okay. It's a, yeah. It's it's a, it's an import. That's why. So if, if the answer was in the middle, then I guess you'd be a Reese's take five bar. You can get soft pretzels, right? That is true. That is a good point. But... It's the best candy ever, period. 
Yeah, I mean, I have I have never tried Aresas, and I guess I wouldn't be the best person to ask this opinion of, because I'm more of a savory person. It does intrigue me enough. But the problem here is, to get Reese's, you have to go to, effectively, a place that sells stuff from America. And they usually put a premium on it. Uh, anyway, yes, hello, Monster Lappin. <laughs> Jeez. What is with the conversations tonight, honestly? There's been some off-the-rails things being discussed. But still, it's like... No, 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 I wanted to sell, I just... <sighs> it was such a weird question. When it was asked, I was expecting either, like, a... Something that was an option, right? Like, I, I expected two big buttons, and one of them was gonna be chocolate, and the other one was gonna be pretzel. Not a scale. I just... I'm a very, uh, semantic and pedantic person, like, I like to debate that kind of stuff. Also, uh, the fact that I do UX as a job, the fact that it was a slider just bothers me. <laughs> it just bothers me, because I'm like, what do you mean? Like, on a scale of chocolate to pretzel, what, what kind of question is that? Okay, chat. On a scale of pizza to chicken, what kind of uh, chef are you? Are you a chicken chef or are you a pizza chef? Are you 0.5 pizza and 0.5 chicken? Or 0.9 chicken and 0.1 pizza? <laughs> Neither. Well, it's a sc it's on a scale, you have to answer, right? That's why it's a scale. Because the scale gives you all this flexibility. Barbecue chicken pizza, oh boy. If you... Better hope you don't have any, like, hardcore Italian friends. I do like barbecue chicken pizza as well, but... Man, the hardcore Italian friends will be like... No, chicken doesn't belong on a pizza. One of my go-to pizzas recently, uh, has been... There's this place, so they do a pepperoni pizza. They call it an American pizza. But here's the kicker on it, right? So, it's exactly how you would picture it. It's like pepperoni and it's a crispy crust, but... Then they get, uh... I think it's like a garlic butter, I don't know, but they, they brush it on top of the pizza afterwards, right? So, it's like a pepperoni pizza, but then it, it kind of tastes like a garlic focaccia. And it's- it's so good. They would also say pineapple doesn't belong, and that's just wrong. I mean, look, if you're talking about the food's origins, like, if you were to say a traditional pizza, okay, fine, right? But I think you can put whatever you want on food, really. Just, as long as you enjoy it. And there's stranger things that I've heard, like, in Sweden, they put banana- they have banana and curry pizza. And whilst I personally wouldn't get it, it does intrigue me. Your brother-in-law works on a cruise ship right now, and the staff made a tuna salad pizza. What's on a tuna salad pizza? Is it exactly what it sounds like, just like a can of tuna? I don't want to have the pizza discussion again, because- or the bad pizza discussion. Because this always leads to me going through the... There's a Twitter account dedicated to bad pizza, and it's just this rabbit hole that I just keep going down every now and then. Particularly that video of the, uh, the dude from Brazil making a pizza. And just every minute of it, he's doing something wrong, but he just does it with such confidence. Like, yes, this is the way you make pizza. 
tuna salad, canned tuna, mustard, relish, baked onto a pizza. Ugh. No, thank you. I would not enjoy, would not try. But if someone out there has enjoyed, then who am I to say you're wrong? You know? Life's too short. Just make what you like to eat and then just don't worry about what other people have to say about it. The only time you should pay attention is like if it's on the topic of having a traditional one. So if you want to have something that's in line with the traditions of the place that invented the food, sure. That then you can have the opinion of what belongs and what doesn't. But if you just in general want to eat something you enjoy, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, ah! <laughs> I hate it when they do that. Ugh, I'm so bad at fishing. So, the only pizza we have in Australia that I think isn't really uh, something that is... Uh... Well, no, there's two. Okay, there's two pizza inventions from here. One of them, it's not too much of a stretch, and most pizza places they'll do what's known as an Aussie. And uh, that is just bacon and eggs and onion, basically. That's the pizza. But Pizza Hut here, do you want to see the monstrosity they made? Hang on. Let me find, let me find, I think I have a picture of this in my downloads, actually. Maybe I don't need to s share the browser, but hang on. Because I talked about this before. Uh, but I mean, you know, in Australia we have meat pies, which are like... It's like a pot pie for you Americans, but it's just beef mince and gravy, right? And at sport at sports games, instead of hot dogs, that's pretty much what you get. Right? Um, there's other options, but typically... That's the go-to. It's like a hand pie, and they're pretty good. Now... Why am I giving you this context? Because I'm talking about pizza all of a sudden. I'll, I'll tell you why. If I can find the photo here on my desktop. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just look it up. It's fine. I hope you. I hope you. You can imagine what I'm about to show you. <laughs> nah, I'll just look it up. It's cool. I did not try this myself. Um. So I'll get, I'll get the marketing image for it, and then I'll get the actual image. There we go. All right. So this is what Pizza Hut here in Australia was selling. So you could get any pizza basically, and then on the outer crust were these tiny pies. So yeah, like those circular things is one of these pies that I was talking about. Miniature ones, because there's, there's two sizes. There's, like, the ones that are the size of a pot pie. And then ones that they call party, which they usually have at kids' parties. They're smaller. Way smaller. So ev every slice has one of those at the end of it. And, uh... I mean, this is reality, right? <laughs> That's what it looks like, really, but... Um... Yeah. Beef pie sounds like an upgrade to a hot dog. It, it's pretty good. And, uh... I did say bacon, eggs, and onion. I did say bacon, eggs, and onion. So, it it's not really a breakfast pizza. Um, by the way, if you want a little hack... If you have leftover pizza, the next day... Cut a circle hole... In it, and then cook it up on a skillet and crack an egg over it and just cook the egg that way 
and then eat it with a knife and fork. It's pretty damn good. But, yeah, you can get this anytime. Um, and as far as the pies go, the ones that you can get from bakeries, they're pretty excellent. I mean, it's something that it's worth a try, and I'm sure you'll like it, but... I don't know. It's it's overkill, and it's... It's an abomination to pizza purists, I guess. That's our contribution to the pizza abominations. The hack sounds so good with egg. Yeah. I came up with it as a kid, and I've been doing it. It's so good. Usually just eat it cold. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't have cold pizza until a couple of years back. Where some of the American viewers, they swore by it, and I was like, alright. I had, I'll tell you what, I had pizza. I have some leftover slices in the fridge, I'm just gonna go try one. And you know what? It's pretty good. But, cooking it on a skillet, if you have a crust that's not that crispy to begin with, putting it on a skillet and just like putting some olive oil underneath, makes that crust a little crispy. And it's kind of just like a nice, a nice breakfast meal. You have egg, you have a bit of meat and whatever fillings you had on the pizza. It only works if you, if the slice is of a decent size, like... If you go to pizza places that do the very terrible cutting where you just end up with a slice that's tiny, then it doesn't work, but in general, it works pretty well. Oh my god, I can't catch these big ones. Ugh. Gonna have to try it. Try it, let me know. Or if you want the Aussie rendition of it, um... I mean, I guess they pretty much just put egg over it before it goes into the, the pizza oven. I don't know. I don't think the Aussie-style pizza is for everyone, but... Suck. I need I need a picture that kind of sums up just how I feel at the moment with the fish. Every time every time I miss every time I miss a fish, this is me. <laughs> it's just like I don't know what I was expecting. Anyway. Don't know about bacon, egg, and onion. Definitely try the hack. Yeah, I mean... The egg cooks. It doesn't become hard. But I guess that, that's dependent on how long you put it in there, but... It works pretty well. Should I just give up on fishing? Have I, have I just... I think I've lost it. <laughs> I'm not catching anything. Okay, I got- I got another one that I try to convince everyone to make once. Now this one, you're going to have to trust me on this. You were thinking scrambled eggs, a yolky egg would probably be the bomb. No, 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 yeah, it's a yolky egg. Like, you just kind of put it over before you cook it. Like, it's not a scrambled egg situation, like, you put it over the top before you put it in the oven. 
And then it kind of goes into the cheese and everything, so... It works. Alright, so trust trust me on this one. Every, every single time I recommend this to someone, I always have to do a lot of convincing to get them to try it. But it, so far... Out of, like, about 15 people that I've gotten to try this, every single one of them were like, Okay, Will, you are right. So I'm gonna tell you this one. There is something we do in Australia for kids' birthdays in school, typically. You can get them done at, uh, birthday parties in general. But the reason they do it is because it's almost like an arts and crafts thing. Uh, and it's easy to make and the kids like it. It's called fairy bread. Now... I'll get a picture of it. And I'll tell you how to make it. It's very simple. Very, very simple. And it tastes delicious. Okay? Let me find a good picture. Yeah, this is, this is a decent one. Alright. Now... This is what it is, right? Now, very easy to make, and they have them for kids' birthdays when they're in school. Like, has three ingredients. You thought I said berry bread? No. Uh, how would I say it with an Ameri American accent? Fairy. No, that's furry. Fairy? I don't know. Um... Okay. One sec. You know, uh, her bread. <laughs> just to be, just to be clear. Okay, we good? Alright. Now. The... The three ingredients. Very simple. Okay? Trust me on this. This is delicious. You're gonna love it. Get some white bread. The cheaper the better. Just get some white bread. Next, you're going to get some margarine. Which is like a... What's the equivalent? Hang on. Margarine. They call it something else in America. I forget what it's called. It's like a vegetable shortening. Maybe they still have margarine. But it's like a- it's like a vegetable shortening, I guess. But, you know, it's called margarine here. Fake butter, got it. Alright, cool. Now... You're going to get this, and you're going to spread it on the bread. And you're going to spread it kind of like you would peanut butter. Okay? You're going to spread it like you would peanut butter, so not a thin layer. Just, like, kind of thick, but not too thick. Okay? And then you're going to sprinkle rainbow sprinkles. It, it has to be rainbow sprinkles. These kind of rainbow sprinkles. And you're just gonna cake the whole bread in this rainbow sprinkle stuff. And that's it. And then you're going to eat it. And what's going to happen... You're going- what's going to happen is that this is going to taste like icing when you eat it. Believe it or not, it's going to taste like icing. And it tastes amazing. It tastes like magic. Trust me on this, try it, you're going to like it, get back to me. But the, hard, the hardest part to convince people about is the, the margarine thing. It's like, why would I coat bread so thickly in margarine and then eat it? That sounds disgusting, Will. No, listen. Try it. I'm telling you. You're going to love it. So far, out of everyone that I've gotten to try it, not a single person has gone, this is disgusting, why did you make me do this? Try it. Okay. This makes me want to ask if I've ever done this, but instead of sprinkles, added cinnamon sugar. Uh, yeah, we, we've had some places that do breakfast with, uh, cinnamon sugar. 
on toast. I've definitely had that before. But the important the important thing is the rainbow sprinkles. It can't be it can't be a single flavor. It has to be the multicolored thing. Chocolate sprinkles won't give you the same feeling. It has to be that artificial color sweetness. But it is uh one of the best Australian food items, I think. But, yeah, the, the reason it's done here for birthdays is it's just, it's fun for kids to make that. And it tastes great. It's just... It's colourful. And people get really fancy with it, like... People have made cakes in this style, it's... There's a whole subculture to this, but in general, just... That's, uh, it's a staple of, uh... Australian childhood birthdays, I guess. Another weird partner... Wait, combo that you learn for your partner is peanut butter on a burger. Oh, I can understand that. That doesn't seem strange to me because I guess in Australia... There's a lot of uh, Southeast Asian influence and they use peanut butter on quite a bunch of different things, so to me it's not that off-putting. I'd have that. Okay, I have enough to sell here. You were shocked and thought he was joking. <laughs> it sounds weird, but when you boil it, when you put it down to the food science behind it, Satay burger seems normal. Yeah, exactly. It's a satay. Yeah. I guess if you're not used to, uh, like, satay, then that's where it, I guess it's a bit strange. Satay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sauce made out of peanut. Um, common in Southeast Asian cooking. So, like, in Malaysia, for example, they'll have, uh, this thing called roti, which is... It's not really a bread, but I guess... I don't know how to describe it. Um, hang on. Roti. What's it classified as? It's like, okay, it's a flatbread. Technically. So, roti is a flatbread, and then they kind of cut it. And then they serve it with a satay sauce, which is just peanut butter, mainly. Hang on. And you just dip it in it, and it's, it's pretty good. Um, let me find a good picture. We've gone down to food talk, it's fine. Yeah, there we go, that was a good, that's a good photo. But yeah, this kind of stuff is pretty common here. Uh, it looks like that. Sorry about the small resolution. But yeah, it's just like little triangles, and then you dip it in this sauce, which is made out of peanut. But they also, uh... will use it to have meats in it, so you'll have it like, meat is inside of it, and then... you have it with a side of rice or something. So if you've had that before, I guess peanut butter on a burger doesn't weird you out. Because, I guess, you can make the connection. Okay, I, I got I got another one for you. I haven't tried this one. But this is like a very, very regional Australian thing, apparently. I don't know where. I, I'm pretty sure it's like somewhere in the middle of nowhere, but... One of my friends swears that it's a thing. And has eaten it in front of me, so... Actually, a couple. A couple. One co-worker and one good friend that moved down to the state that I live in. So, I guess I'll have to say this in two ways. Okay, so, this is what you do. 
Get a bag of potato chips slash crisps. Okay? Now, the recommended one, I guess, is, uh... I don't know if you have any artificial chicken-flavored chips, so that's the recommendation, chicken-flavored chips. But I guess you could try cheese. So what you need to do is you get your bag, you open it, and then what you do is, with your, just crush all the chips. I mean, like, just, you know, get the bag and just crush them. Crush it. Until the chips are, like, tiny, right? Then, get some supermarket lemon juice. Not real lemon juice. That shit that they sell at the supermarket. The one that comes in, like, a bottle and it's, like, processed lemon juice. Okay? And then you're going to put, uh, I believe, like, two tables- no. Is it- was it two tablespoons or two teaspoons? I can't remember, but like... Probably teaspoons, because tablespoons seems like too much. Um, you put it in the bag, and then you kind of shake it, so your chips get coated in this lemon juice. And then you eat that with a fork. So it's like this... Tiny potato chip thing coated in lemon, fake lemon juice. And then you just eat it like that. I don't know. I have, I haven't tried it. I haven't ventured to try it. But, you know, apparently it's a thing. If you want to go extra weird. <laughs> that's, that's my recommendation. I haven't been adventurous enough to try it. But, if you want to... Do it for science, and be like some middle-of-nowhere Australian person, uh, I guess that's how you do it. I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm expecting shock on this one. In theory, it doesn't sound bad. Right. Well, the only other potato chip-related one that I've tried is, uh... My friend Kat, she accidentally put potato chips in the freezer once. And she took them out and ate them out of the freezer and she liked it and yeah, kind of recommends that you do that. So I did try it. You put your bag of potato chips in the freezer. And then, you eat it once it's cold, right? So, the, the weird thing is, like, the potato chips kind of remain the same in consistency. Like, they don't change, it's just, they're just cold. And it's, it's kind of this weird, nice feeling. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not what you think it is. Lemon chicken makes sense. No, but... I guess the, the the part is that you have to crush the chips. That's the thing. It's like you're crushing the potato chips. You're not just getting regular potato chips and shaking the bag, right? That, that part, I was like, why are you crushing them? And they're like, because it's better when the chips are in tiny bits. Okay. So, I don't know. You like making walking... Tacos with Doritos. I mean, Dorito tacos are pretty normal now, right? It's like an Americanized thing. Chili pie with Fritos. I can't say I've tried that. Taco Bell recently opened in Australia. And I've been too scared to go try it. Taco Bell opened in Australia, and then we had a pandemic. I don't know. I think it's funny how I'm caught up on crushing the chips and not the flavor combo. No, because I guess the flavor combo, I can kind of understand it. I guess the part that I take issue with is why are you crushing the chips? It's like this extra step. It's one of those things where it's like a tiny detail and it makes me curious. It's like, well, why do you crush the chips?
Because it's it seems got to distribute the flavor evenly. Hmm. I don't know. One open near you two and you're the same. Any American I've asked about Taco Bell, they're like, it's the best thing, but then it becomes the worst thing after you've eaten. So I don't know if I want to experience that. Also, the thing that I get is, uh... I mean, my family's from Central America, right? So, like, if I was to go into a Taco Bell, I, can, I could just hear... My mom kind of saying in Spanish, why are you going there? It tastes like cardboard. Come back home, I'll make you a good taco. What are you doing? What are you eating? What is this? What is this? Mince, mince meat? No, tacos should have steak. Why are you eating? Why are you eating cardboard with mince meat? So, I just- I just haven't had the guts to go visit one on- on those two counts. It's just from what I've been told of it. I have to be in a mood where I kind of want to punish myself. Sometimes you get that mood where you don't want, like, a pizza, you want a- a bad pizza. And by bad, I mean, like, you know, Pizza Hut or Domino's or whatever chain might be nearby, right? Like, you don't want to go to the fancy place that probably has, like, real meat on it. <laughs> the Cheesy Gordita Crunch is your fave all-time at Taco Bell. Okay, I've heard about that one. That's- that's a thing that just keeps coming up. It's like a common thing. Don't get me wrong, I'm- I'm intrigued, but I don't know if I can bring myself to do it. And I guess the, the only thing that's been stopping me is, like, all the Taco Bell that are in Melbourne, well, the city. They're kind of out of the way for me, so I wouldn't be anywhere near one. But I know that the day will come where they'll open one that's kind of conveniently located to where I am. And I might just pull the trigger and then just sell, like, send photos to American friends. Oh, I can't catch the big fish! You would say it's worth a shot, but it's not going to be mind-blowing. Well, here's the thing, um, that I've heard. When it comes to fast food equivalents in Australia. This is coming from Americans that have visited Australia. They say that Australian versions of, like, McDonald's, KFC, uh, our version of Burger King, which is called Hungry Jack's, uh, that they're all better than American versions, because apparently the quality of meat we use in these places is better. And I think it's got to do with the fact that our government just doesn't allow certain things, so... Particularly chicken. Because all the big fast food restaurants, they don't own farms here. Uh, they outsource it to Australian farmers. So, like, KFC doesn't have chicken farms here in Australia. They get it from... ...places that, uh, would sell it directly to customers. Right? Like, pretty much what you would get at a supermarket, so... It's a better quality meat. So maybe Taco Bell might be, like, a, a better experience? I don't know. But, I mean, like, look, I, I've been to a taco night. Where it's been white people taco night. I've, I've been to that. And it's fine. But I guess the difference there is, like, I'm being invited and it would be... It wouldn't be polite. Like, my parents would be like, yeah. They wouldn't say anything about it. Because it's not polite to... To say rude things about someone inviting you and then you say, Oh, well, that's not how you make tacos. Right? They would let it go in that regard. The part where they would say something and joke about it would be like me going out of my way to go to a fast food restaurant and pay for that shit. That's the part where they would just be relentless and just 
keep making fun of me for it. Which, uh, it's understandable. And the thing is, I could make- I can make tacos. Like, it's not like I can't make them. The only thing that I can't do is make the tortillas like my mom can, right? So, you know, she grew up in El Salvador, third world Central American country, and has been cooking since, I think, the age of eight, right? Do you know the way she makes tortillas? So she makes them by hand, and she can get every single one to be the exact same thickness every time. And not just that, the way they cook them, it's on this thing that is effectively just a giant piece of metal. And they put it over an open fire or a stovetop. It's just a giant piece of metal. She doesn't use a spatula, she uses her bare fucking hands to scoop it out. And when she taught me to make them once, she wanted me to do the same thing and would make fun of me because I didn't want to burn my hands. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, we're not in the stone age. Like, there's a, there's a spatula, I'm going to use the spatula. I don't care. I don't want to develop a callus. I, don't, I, I want my hands to be fine. I don't want to burn my hands for like 20 years just to be able to say, haha, I can do this with my bare hands. Anyway. In case it wasn't obvious, my parents are like a bit of a troll. In the best kind of way. I got into tr a lot of trouble as a kid. And often there would be times where, like, they'd be telling me off, but then also laughing. I just figured out why I'm not fishing properly. I- I haven't, um, I haven't plugged in the DS to my headphones directly, that's why. There's wireless audio latency. That is why I'm not catching fish properly. Where's my cable? One sec. All right, let's try this now. Sounds like a nightly convo between you and your partner. He always says, your hands are the best tool in the kitchen. This is also coming from the person who cut his finger tips off while cooking. Jeez. But, yeah, it's like... I mean, let's extend that logic to, to other stuff. It's like, why, why do we use any modern convenience at all? No, don't- don't use Wikipedia. Go get what you're gonna do, right? You're going to go get a bookshelf. You're going to put this bookshelf in your study. A nice and large one, right? Because you want to hold a lot of knowledge, yeah? And what you're going to do, you're then going to go track down a bunch of books to put on this bookshelf, like an encyclopedia. So if you ever need to look up anything, no, no, you're not gonna use Google like a- like a fool, right? Like, you got something to prove here. You want to prove that you're doing things the correct way. So you're going to go onto this bookshelf, find by volume what you're looking for, try and find the page that it's on, and then hopefully the information's there. Right? I mean, why would you use a modern convenience? Why would you use a spatula in a kitchen when you can use your bare fucking hands? Why use Wikipedia when you can just go look it up in a book somewhere? Why am I playing Animal Crossing when I can't go- when I can just go outside, right? Go up to a tree, Get a twig. Get a twig. Just go get it. I'm going to go get a twig. And I'm just going to make a ball out of mud. And then I'm just going to, like, poke the mud ball with my twig. You know, why? Why use modern conveniences? Why talk to me through a chat virtually? Like, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I will, I will, 
I'll mm. make a P.O. box, yeah? And if you want to talk to me from this day forward, what you're going to do, you're going to go to your desk, you're going to get a piece of paper, you're going to write your message, you're going to pay for the postage, it's going to come to Australia in about four weeks to a month. Yeah? I'll get your message, responding to the game that I played almost a month ago, and then I'm going to read it, and then I'll be like, okay, let me reply. So then I'll go out to the store, because I've run out of paper, and I'm going to get a piece of paper, come back home, right? R reply to your message, seal it on an envelope, go down to the post office, pay the postage, mail it back. You're going to wait four to six weeks. And then that'll be our conversation. We'll be talking about Animal Crossing in two months' time. How does that sound? And then we have to do it for every other person you want to communicate with, because we shouldn't be using modern conveniences, because that makes us soft. <laughs> I've had this debate as well, yeah. I've had this debate as well. Are those dark circles under your eyes, sweetie? That means you're not getting enough rest. How, how do you know? How do you know that it's late at night for me? Is it because I'm just ranting like a maniac about stupid stuff and not able to catch fish? I recommend a healthy 14 hours of sleep per night with plenty of naps sprinkled throughout the day. Frigga. 14 hours. Really? Chat, who here gets 14 hours of sleep a night? I'm lucky to get 8. Oh, why are you so sad? Ugh, man, I'm really down today, Rerack. Ugh, man, okay. Postal servers are a modern convenience. They're, they're, okay. They're like a retro modern convenience now. But I guess, fine, okay, go, let's, let's take it to another level. To be the purest, what we're going to do, right? We're going to go down to, we're each going to go down to our local park, right? You're going to locate a flock of pigeons that are just eating. And you're going to bait one, capture it, and then you're going to raise that pigeon. And you're going to train it for about two years to be able to travel long distances. And then you're going to attach a message to its foot, and you're just going to point generally in the direction of Australia. I don't know. You can't you can't use a compass because that's modern convenience. So you're just going to have to take a guess, right? Like, Australia is in the southern hemisphere, and it's mostly, I guess, if you point south and to the west, you'll probably get there. So just point southwest, yeah. Send your carrier pigeon southwest generally, and maybe it might arrive one day. And if it does, well, hopefully the carrier pigeon that I trained for two years will be able to send the message back to you. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm losing my mind. Ugh. Why, why am I having this conversation at two in the morning? Jesus Christ. How will your pigeon find a bunch of paid actors? <laughs> I get it. Because Australia doesn't exist. I feel like I've just gone on like a like a rant that you would see in Seinfeld. <laughs> it's just like a George Costanza rant. I can just picture George Costanza just like ranting about exactly what I was talking about.
I think my fishing's getting a little bit better now that I've plugged in my headphones directly. So, it does make a difference. I need to stop. I need to stop thinking about this. But, like... <laughs> I was just thinking... I mean, if you want to talk about the purest kitchen, why use a gas stove? Just... What you do is you go get a bunch of firewood outside, and then you start a fire with two twigs. Because hands are the best tools, right? So, if you're not starting your kitchen with your hands, then... I hate to say it, but you're not really cooking. You need to start the fire with two twigs. Much like our ancestors did. You are not honoring our ancestors if you are using a gas stove. Is anyone tired of this conversation yet? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is this is the midnight shift, so You're laughing hard. Alright, as long as someone's finding it funny, great. Then, mission accomplished. Snapper. I can't remember if I donated. I'll check anyway. keep having this dream about a red snapper. Oh, come on! I think my subconscious is trying to tell me I need one. But where would I find such a thing? What, you have one? What a strange coincidence. Um, then at the risk of sounding awkward, would you be willing to sell me yours? Sure. Whoa, that's not a bad price. I think. Pretty sure. You were totally spying on me. There's no way you would know I have that fish, unless you weren't spying. You were spying on me. Do you know what the worst conversation I had, ever, in terms of someone using mental gymnastics to kind of like... Because I, I feel like, okay, not like the whole modern convenience thing, like, you know, my mom saying use your hands instead of a spatula, that's like a bit of mental gymnastics, right? Like, justify, trying to tell me to do it that way, when there's, there's a perfectly other valid way to do it that doesn't affect the end product, okay? 
It's not like someone is gonna look at my tortillas and go, hmm, he clearly used a spatula. Okay? But I'll tell you the worst conversation I had in terms of that sort of mental gymnastics. I was heading to a, a dinner once and we uh, did carpooling. So I was in the car with two people that I knew and then mutual friends, right? So one of them, um, she didn't take that long to proclaim that she was a vegan. I don't even rem remember how the conversation got there, but that's not the point. So yeah, whatever. That's pretty early in the conversation. A bit later, we're talking about uh, restaurants because we were going to go hang out for another friend that was visiting a couple of weeks later. So we're talking about where to go. And we mentioned this restaurant that did spicy stuff. And then she chimes in and she's like, oh, I love the I love the spicy fish. And then I kind of did a double take and was like, wait, aren't you a vegan? It's like, I am. It's like, what? But you, you sit, you, oh, so you became a vegan. It's like, no, no, I eat fish. Like, but that's not a vegan. Vegans don't, vegans don't eat fish. It's like, no, but fish don't count. There are plenty of people that eat fish and call themselves vegetarians. It's like, no, they're pescatarians. That, that's a, there's a difference. And I'm not, it was like arguing with a brick wall, basically. Just did not want to acknowledge that they weren't a vegan. And I wish I, I wish I had like a voice recording of that conversation just to be able to, I can't convey the mental gymnastics that were happening. Trying to convince me that eating fish is okay for vegans. <sighs> quite, quite possibly the worst conversation I've ever had. <laughs> Vegan fish, yep, yeah. You're talking about five, like four people in a car telling one person that they're wrong, including that person's friend. Like she was like, no, I think, I think they're right. I, I, I you know, I don't think eating, if you eat fish, you're not a vegan. <laughs> it's, it's, and even if you, like, even if you're not a vegan, so what? It's just like, it's a label, man. Maybe they were an ethical vegan, so as long as the fish was caught ethically, it's fine. But it's still, it's still a stretch. Like, there's a clear established definition of it, right? It's one of those things, it's like they were following every rule except one. At that point, you just say, I don't eat animal products or animals except fish. That's it. You've heard people use that as an argument. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the conversation didn't last long. Like, after about 10 minutes of it, just kind of changed the subject. Because... Quite clearly, yeah, it wasn't gonna... There was not gonna be an end result. And I felt like I was going to have a conniption before dinner, so that probably wasn't the best thing. The thing is, like, I'm, I'm a pretty laid-back person, right? Like, I don't get into arguments with people. I try to be nice wherever possible. But if someone is, like, telling me 
Well, okay, not only coming from a place where they're trying to make me feel bad about something because I'm... Um, that's, that's ultimately what it was. I think it was kind of like... I was being told that I was wrong, but also being told that I was a monster for eating meat. Not in those words, but kind of... Kind of making me feel that way and others. And then having the goal to say, No, I'm a vegan, but I eat fish. I don't know, man. I think any other time I, I would have let it go, but there was just too many tick boxes along the... Oh no, 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 we're not having any of this. Look at how much better I'm doing now that I have, uh... You hate it when people kind of admit that they're wrong or aren't willing to be open to the possibility they might be. Yeah. Yeah. I try to listen to what everyone says, right? Like, even if it's something that I don't agree with, I'll still listen and then be like, all right, I don't agree, and why? But I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> you read the room, right? Like, if you're in a car with three strangers and one friend, right? And you say something, and it makes the three strangers kind of do a double take, and even your friend kind of be like, Hey, listen, this isn't the hill you want to die on. I don't know, you might want to consider your position maybe not being correct. Or, at the very least, not agreeable and just to, like, drop it. Not agreeing or having a civil combo isn't a big deal. No, and it, it shouldn't be. Oh, I guess I don't have fish. I thought I'd- hang on, did I pick the right option? Hang on. Okay, like, there are certain things where it's absolutely fine to say that you're wrong. Like, if someone was to say, oh, you don't- you're just a paid actor, and Australia doesn't exist, I'll be like, you're wrong. Right? That's like a, a pretty black and white thing. And I would say you're wrong because there's all these places that say that, you know, what you're saying is wrong. It's not just me saying that you're wrong. Look at all this stuff over here. Oh, man. Okay. The... This one... Anyway, you just died in a 30-minute fight when the boss literally had a sliver of health. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So... I just remembered another one. I, I'm just like an old man telling stories now, but I'll tell you this one. This is another, like, you're wrong moment. I've been told that I was wrong, and I, I let it go. And I was kind of commended because my friends were like, dude, how did you let that go? But like, okay. There was a... A Spanish restaurant that we went to once. So Europeans, like, when I say Spanish, it's European, right? So, just to be clear. European Spanish. 
So, we're putting in our orders, and, uh, I, or, cause I can read Spanish, I, uh, I basically said the word, said a particular word, as you would in Spanish, as I've been brought up and taught, okay? And then, the service person corrects me, and says it's not pronounced that way. And then pronounces it in more or less in the way that you would an English person reading Spanish. And then I was like, nah, well, it's it's not really pronounced that way. And I said, you know, I, I speak Spanish. And then this person's response was, I spent three weeks in Spain. You're wrong. I spent three weeks in Spain. You're wrong. I'm like, okay. My family immigrated from Central America. I've been s speaking Spanish since I was, like, a little kid. In fact, I learned it before English. And their response to that was, well, agree to disagree. And then they walked away. <laughs> oh, man. Obviously, they learned the whole language in three weeks. Yeah, I know. Man. My friend, she was more angry about it than me. Like, she was seething. And she was like, oh my god, well, I can't believe you didn't say anything to- Like, what? Like, if that were me, I would have, like, tore him a new one, just called him a dumbass. But like, well, ah, it's like, what am I gonna say? It's, it's clearly, that person is not gonna get convinced that they're wrong. It's just a case of, they're just a dumbass, and that's it. It's just... I'm not gonna stress myself over that. If it was a server, you literally would have gotten up and left. <laughs> but I mean, it, it became a meme in our group of friends for a while, where like... Just every now and then, whenever we were, were talking about something, it would just be like, Listen, I spent three weeks in wherever the country was. I think you're wrong. You once bought a co-worker a t-shirt with agree to disagree on their birthday because they do it all the time. <laughs> ah. That's great. I think agree to disagree... I mean, fundamentally the message... I can kind- I can kind of agree with. It's more on things that... I guess there's a gray area, and either person could be right. But the problem is that phrase is kind of used with people that don't want to debate. And they kind of... They're reaching a point where... They feel like they might be wrong and lose the argument, so they'd rather just be like, agree to disagree. Let's say the majority of the times that is used is generally in that circumstance. It's like you say something that kind of logically challenges them, and then they're like, agree to disagree. Oh, man. Too stubborn to back down. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> 
Maybe if they had a modern convenience of an encyclopedia that they could look up at their fingertips, they might be able to learn the pronunciation of words in Spanish, but then they would have to purchase a Spanish encyclopedia. And then they would have to, uh, like, get one of those books that translates, so... Here's what I'm convinced happened with that person. They were backpacking, backpacking across Europe. They went to some restaurant. They ordered what I ordered. They read it. And they would have said, am I pronouncing this correctly? And the person that was serving them, because they couldn't be fucked teaching this person Spanish, because clearly they were going to get it wrong no matter what, just said yes. Because they just wanted to get their job done and get the food out in time. And not spend teaching some tourist Spanish. And so they they treated that as fact. It's like that's probably the one time that they said that word. And because it was reinforced, they were like, haha, I am right. That guy that has first-hand experience of speaking a language for more than 25 years plus? Nah, fuck that guy. That one random person I talked to in Europe told me I was right. How bad was it? Could the word be said a different way, different dialect? Uh, it's- it was pretty clear-cut. Um... So I'll tell you what- I'll tell you what the rule was specifically. Um, in Spanish, if you have one L, it makes like a L sound. If you have two, two L's, it makes like a Y sound, like a Y. So, I made the Y sound because two L's means a Y. And that's like a common thing in Castilian and, um, European Spanish. It's the same thing. It's like, it's a basic fundamental rule of that, of the language. And they said it like, you know, the t how you would two L's in English. So, yeah. It, okay, it's- I don't remember the dish, but like... The word... Chicken in Spanish is pollo. And it's pronounced it's spelled P-O-L-L-O. -L -L but it's pronounced P-O-Y-O. -O. So that's what it was. So, they would have said polo instead of pollo. Or, like, they would say tortilla instead of tortilla. Tortilla. That's how wrong they were. Instead of fajita, they would say fajita. Which sounds dirty now that I say about it. That's what kind of Spanish speaker they were. This is actually sick. This brings back so many memories. I hope you're talking about Animal Crossing and <laughs> not the stories I'm telling, but yeah. I ha this is my first time playing New Leaf. I only played New Horizons. So I figured it was worth going back and playing this. Because um, I've heard people say that there's a lot of stuff in New Leaf that they wish was in New Horizons, so... This is why I enjoy playing this game. It's just kind of laid back. Oh. Oh no. They wanted to give me something. Okay, hang on. Put on the ground. What do you want to give me? No, no, come back, 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 come back. We beat a lot, huh? I'll probably never be able to forget your face now, Rerack. So. Hey, hey. There's a rumor going around about you, you heard? Everyone's saying Will is quite the fishing fiend. I kind of see what they're talking about, Rerack. Oh, I guess it's, it's over. This is giving you flashbacks of when you worked at a Mexican restaurant and had to learn Spanish to talk to the kitchen staff. They were super nice and always correct you if you said something wrong. But I guess the difference is, like, you listened. And you weren't like, actually, it's pronounced polo. You live in America, it's pronounced polo. 
Or wherever you live, I don't know. I'm assuming America. I actually got that once. Um, my very first job was in fast food. It was like a, a chicken fast food place we have here in Australia. Um, and so, you know, this manager, uh, they, we, we sold chicken wraps there as something. So, you know, she was going to make some, uh, as part of food prep. And she goes to me, Will, can you go out to the back and get me some more tortillas? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, no worries. Oh, by the way, like, um, it's pronounced tortilla. And she's like, what? I'm like, it's, it's pronounced tortilla. That's how you say it in Spanish. Oh, well, in a, well, well, we live in Australia, mate, and we say tortilla. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's not an Australian invention. It's like, you wouldn't say champagne. You wouldn't go to a French person. Actually, mate, we live in Australia. It's champagne. Like, you just sound like stupid. I was 15 and, and it was my first job. It was fast food. I didn't care, but that's what I said. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, I, I was, uh, yeah, uh, quite a different person as a teenager. I was, I, I was being paid minimum wage. Like, I mean, that place paid the worst. I was being paid $5.50 an hour when other fast food places paid, I think, like, eight at least. If not nine. Really? I don't have new fish? Alright, fine. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's what happened. Okay, I see. doing well. How have I already been playing this for two hours? This happens every time I play this game. Like, I look- I look at my- my recording time, and it's already been two hours. How- how does that keep happening? There's only a couple of games that do this for me. Well, okay, a small handful. A couple means two, but like... This, Stardew, Terraria, and Diablo, for some reason, I start playing it, I look at the clock, and then suddenly it's two hours later. I feel like I haven't- I haven't achieved anything. Okay. Alright, I feel like I'm the only one telling stories, so if anyone wants to share, like, a tale of, uh, being corrected when the person was clearly wrong, feel free. Or anything else you wish to talk about. This is, like, practically a podcast at this point. <laughs> See, I'm, I apologize if I'm talking about a modern convenience of a podcast. What I, what I meant to say was, this is a call-in radio show, right? Where you call in, except you're not actually able to call in. We're just going to pretend that fact. If you got a co-worker fired for lying about giving a PT a medication outside of... Scope of practice. Damn. And now she only works at a gas station on weekends. I mean... 
I guess when you're doing stuff like that, that's kind of, uh, like, career ending in that field. You know what I don't like about this game? <laughs> I mean, I love this game, but... I was kind of surprised as when you get trash, you get charged to get rid of the trash, and... I don't know. Like, I'm cleaning up this town, and they're charging me to clean up this town. I, I don't feel like that's right. <laughs> should, you should get- you should be incentivized to clean up the town. Hi, welcome to the recycling plant. What have you got for me today? Oh, I have, uh, you know, 20 bottles, 20 glass bottles here. Oh, excellent. Thank you for recycling. That'll be $40, please. What? Well, yeah, we charge you a processing fee for, uh, bringing us glass and we have to process it. So, you know, $40, please. What if I don't want to pay the $40? What if you don't want to pay the $40? Well, you're not going to get your bottles recycled, are you? What alternative do you have? Uh, anyway. Mm -mm. Oh, someone's in... I haven't seen you today. Where are you? I don't like to think of the things I buy here as used. It's more like everyone else was borrowing them until I was ready to take possession of my favorites. Well, that's a pretty positive attitude to have about this. Listen, can I interest you in a fossil? A fossil? Just look look at look at the pristine condition this fossil is in. Or maybe maybe this, maybe some balloons. Can I interest you in some balloons? I've been wanting a balloon lamp so badly. I'm not just saying this because you're here, but it looks like the price is right. Should I go for it? Yes. <laughs> I feel bad because they said fair price. Okay. Oh man. Uh, I guess. Do I want to put anything else up for sale while I'm here? Oh right, I'm here to process the garbage. Uh. I can't believe this. I'm cleaning up this town, why are you charging me? Do you- please tell me- please tell me that me doing this gives- gives me a reward somehow, like, ultimately this is going to reward me for doing this. Like, please- please- please tell me that me disposing of trash eventually is going to get me some sort of reward in this. Like, they- they come one day and they're like, oh, you know, you've cleaned up the town so much. Here. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, yeah, people can be... Yeah. People are the worst, I guess. Let's just go with that. <laughs> That's the theme of today. Don't aspire to be people, chat. It's the worst. Who haven't I run into today? Let me look at my, my villager list. Colton? Where is Colton? I haven't run into Colton today. Maybe Colton is at home. Colton. You said that 
to someone once in their life and it changed. It said it changed their life. What, don't aspire to be a person? Hey, Will. Here you are in my house. I'm really flattered to have you here. Check it. Something up? Check it. Let's talk. I don't need to stay in any official records, but I'd like it to be a person who lives on people's memory. If I can encourage or cheer people up by being someone they always remember, that'd be great. People are the worst, yeah. I mean, another one is like, that I like saying is, the concept of normal is a social construct. Just whatever society defines as normal is pretty much a construct of that society. And if they're making you feel like shit, it's just like, fuck social constructs. A lot of them just tend to be wrong and people follow them and they don't know why other than it's tradition. I'm doing so much better at fishing now that I've I got my headphones into the DS. I gotta remember to do that every time. one too. You know what I read today? I've read that the company that owns Angry Birds, yes that old mobile game, so they're going to delist the classic version of Angry Birds. Doesn't sound like a big deal but the reasoning they gave, right, it's kind of a funny one and I guess like very corporate. Um, the reason they, they're getting rid of the classic version of Angry Birds. To paraphrase it. Too many people are choosing to download Angry Birds instead of the, their newer games. And so what they're doing to bring more exposure to their newer games. They're going to get rid of the old game because they want people playing the newer game. Now that doesn't sound so insidious, except for the fact that their newer games are just riddled with microtransactions and are just garbage. So like... Their, their rationale is basically, hmm, people aren't spending their money and going for predatory stuff. How do we make them do it? I know, let's just get rid of the thing that they love. And probably the only reason they would ever download one of their games. Because then surely they will download the game then. People will stop playing their games. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think one of the most satisfying things to see on the internet is just when... Corporate delusion kind of just, you know, goes too far and then there's just this form of correction that happens and it's fantastic. Mm. 
do people who make these decisions even play games? Ah, uh, no. No. I think you can kind of hear it in the language they use. There are some people that are in charge of game companies and they use the words product instead of game. Like when they're talking about their game, they call it a good product. They don't call it a good game. And that's the sign of someone that doesn't really care about games. They just want to make money. As long as they get a few whales, they don't care. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, the whales kind of pay for it. I don't know. Mobile games never used to be like that. Initially, when they first came out, those are actually pretty decent games. Ones that kind of took advantage of the fact that they had touch screens and they were alright. You know, they weren't masterpieces and they weren't fully fledged experiences, but they were fun at the very least and didn't do any of the stuff that uh, most games do these days. But it seems now it's just like synonymous if you're going to release a game on mobile, the majority of the time it just has to somehow constantly make money. I don't know. Not every game, but the vast majority. Oh, yeah, just let it go. I'll go sell. How are you today, Al? Oh no, I said Al again. Blanche pointed out how often I say Al. It's a habit I just can't shake. Do you think Al all the time makes me seem boring? Uh, not at all. Really? Okay, then I guess I'll keep saying Al whenever I want. It's why you barely play games anymore? Really? I mean, what games do you play when you typically play games? I think these days, uh, most of my games come from indie developers as opposed to, like, the big ones. The only big publishers that I still get games from, uh, I mean, Nintendo, S first party Sony, and... let me think. I guess to some degree Sega, because their stuff is, like, it can be on par with Nintendo stuff, sometimes. Um... But anything kind of either owned or pretty well connected with with those. I mean, I guess Microsoft Studios to some degree. Like, they do pretty decent stuff when it's not monetized. But I, I definitely stay clear of stuff like Call of Duty. Um, or like any other sports games, because they're basically gambling machines now. <laughs> I was- I'm not into sports anyway, so it doesn't affect me. The only- I guess the only thing that I have touched that has monetization would be Overwatch, but that's because I, I have friends that play it and I like to play with them from time to time. And I guess now Diablo, which is kind of that sad to see, but it is headed in that direction. But outside of that, like, I- yeah, I, I just don't- I don't gel with stuff like that. Really not a lot of money. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a bit of a grind.
I haven't really been playing this that much, so that's why I'm, I'm spending a little bit more time today. Plus, it's a Friday, so, you know. It's all good. Stardew Valley, Factorio, Dawn of War, Soulstorm, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire is excellent. Stardew, not that Stardew isn't. Not that Stardew isn't. Stardew's fantastic. I love that game, but I, I guess I'm calling out Slay the Spire. Because it's one that you won't see me stream, but I do play it. It's just... It's one of those ones that I just... Sometimes I'll just play it in bed. <laughs> Had to look on Steam to see. Uh, that little, huh? No, I, yeah, I guess I, I don't know. I'm one that, for some reason, doesn't stick to one game too often. I've just kind of always been like that. I just like to experience different media. Because I feel like it, it's not only really good for the soul, but it helps expand your horizons, so to speak. Like, you just see... I guess because I'm a bit of a graphics design nerd as well. Just, just like seeing different visuals and... Yeah. I just like experiencing different things. There's very few genres of games that I haven't played. I think the main one that you won't see me play that much, it's, it's extremely rare would be a real-time strategy, just because I'm terrible at micromanagement. Like, if I have to control multiple units and kind of get them to do stuff and it's in a competitive nature, like, I just- I just can't do that. I have an- I have an appreciation for them, like, I've- I've actually watched, uh... Like, matches of games. Not to use the word, but, you know, I'm not gonna use the word, <laughs> but... People playing at a high skill level, and I can appreciate, like, what goes into it, strategy-wise, but I just can't play it myself. Played World of Warcraft pretty much exclusively for years. I guess that's another one, is, like, MMOs, I'm not really touching that often. But again, I, I appreciate them, like, I can understand them. And I know why people play them. Yeah, I was in university when World of Warcraft came out, and I just couldn't do that to myself. <laughs> I was like, hmm, this is, this is gonna be something that if I do enjoy it, it's going to ruin me. And man, I just used to see how tired used, people used to come into class. Because they would have been up all night playing it, or, like, if we wanted to go do something, sometimes the response would be, can't, I got a raid. So... You weren't smart enough to think like that. Ah, but, I mean, don't treat it as, like, not being smart enough, right? Like... At the end of the day, the positive to the MMO is, like, I think as far as community goes, or, like, finding friends, it is... Definitely one of the experiences that... There's a pretty strong sense of it. Assuming you find the right group, but, you know... It's kind of neat that a bunch of people can get together and nerd out on something. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has, I guess, a perceived negative factor where you might be a bit antisocial in the eyes of some. And maybe it might be digging into your personal life, but the flip side is, it's like, you do have this social experience that you probably wouldn't be able to get elsewhere. And you might have met people that, under any other circumstance, you wouldn't have met. I mean, there are people out there that say, like, anyone that watches someone else play video games is just an idiot. Like, why would you ever do that? And it's such a stupid argument. Like, oh, okay, because you're not playing the game, you're not allowed to watch it. 
Okay. Um. Then do you go to like sports games? Are you are you in the are you in the team? No. Why are you going to a sports game for? Why? You're you're not the one on the field. Why do you go? Why do you go watch a sports game? Oh, a TV show. Why are you watching that TV show? You're not the one acting in the TV show. Is your brother in, on the TV show? No. Then why are you watching that TV show if no one that is personally connected to you is on that TV show? Why are you watching it for? Anyway. <laughs> part of me kind of wishes I did play WoW. But there's also a part of me that I'm glad I didn't. So... It's a balance, I think, at the end of the day. so old now. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to think how old it is. It just takes me back to, like, the conversation earlier. It's like, at what point does something become retro? <laughs> I think WoW is, pr is retro at this point. It doesn't feel like your game anymore has changed over the years. Yeah. I mean, that's why they did the classic thing, right? Because they wanted to like go back to that time. Because it was completely different back then. I have, I have no I have no frame of reference, but I guess that's like the intent behind that. I did check out Classic when it came out for a little bit, because I had no one to play with, I was like, nah. I just didn't want to go to the effort of, like, finding a social circle to be able to play with, play it properly, so... I got lazy. It's <laughs> just like, nah. But I, I did... Like, I see for myself what it- what it was like, so... I understand it. The nostalgia would have been nice to experience that. I guess that's kind of the thing I'm hoping with when Diablo 4 comes out. I, I'm not convinced it's gonna happen, but... I like that genre, and... It was the first Diablo game I played was Diablo 3, and when that launched, I just remember being able to log in, and then there would be, like, a group of people wanting to play or do something or team up or whatever. It was very easy to get a game, and, yeah, often you would have groups just sharing loot, talking about what they found, all that stuff. It was fun. It was a great experience. But, I mean, since then, I haven't really had that similar. You just joined some guild because someone whispered you in-game and just got to know a couple of people in the guild to the dungeons with. Ah. Yeah, I guess I just got lazy. I just... I don't know. I'm like... I'm kind of... I don't... I don't know. I don't believe in the personality stuff too much, right? Like... Putting people in a box is one of the worst things I think you can do. But, for the sake of it, like... Sometimes I have periods where I'm more introverted and don't want to... Like, I, I, I prefer to be alone, if that makes sense. Like, I like to... Enjoy time alone. And I don't want to, like, socialize too much. 
I've heard you have something pretty nice, sweetie. A lot about front. You have about 160 but Yeah, sure. Just take it. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Never mind. Anyway. Um... And then there are times where I'm a bit more social and a bit more vocal, right? And I think when I played WoW, I was kind of in that... In that mindset where I, like... I guess the, the thought of having... To go to these lengths to play this game, and then I had to, like, seek out a group of people to play with, get to know them, and... It was just kind of like I just, I just wasn't in that mindset at that point, so... I gave up on it. And, I mean, for streaming, it's kind of <laughs> you might You might notice it from time to time. I don't know. Maybe you won't, but... There are times in streaming, and I don't mean to do it, where, like, sometimes I'll be, ask I'll be asking people about their day and take interest in what they're doing. And I generally, like, you know, collectively hope that everyone's doing well, and I express that when I can. But sometimes there are times where it's just, I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm just kind of playing a game and, you know, the conversation will be very one-sided. And it's not really great for streaming. I've been trying to work on it, but I guess that's just how I am, is like... Sometimes you'll get me at a time where I'm more social. And then other times, it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, I just want to chill. And I'm kind of content with just talking with myself. And if someone talks to me, I'll just answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit weird. Organizing 40-person raids is no picnic. I can imagine. Um, work for the guild leaders to organize stuff. I mean, especially if time zones and work schedules come into the mix, that, that would suck. I, I mean, from a streaming perspective, organize, doing an organized stream for me is hard because I have, I have a pretty split audience. Like, I think it's it's almost 50-50. Uh, like, between America and uh, Europe. So it, it's kind of hard to organize anything. Because one side of the world is always going to be missing out. Unless I get up at like 5 in the morning, which... Pff, yeah, no. I'm not a morning person. Being social at a side. It is. It is. And that's why, like, I never really expect anyone to type a message here or, like, talk to me. Because I understand just... Sometimes you just don't want to do that. Face when you schedule your life around WoW server time. Yeah. I mean... I've scheduled my life around certain things. <laughs> Not WoW's server time, but that resonates. There was a period where I was into Dota, and I used to... Sometimes take, uh, like, uh, a day off work. I mean... Not a cheeky day, just to be clear. Like, I actually asked for a day off. And they'd ask for what? And I'd be like, oh, there's a Dota tournament on. I want to watch it. But it's on at 3 in the morning. I was honest about it. <laughs> so.
I, mean, I think a few times for Diablo for this season, I would arrange life around that as well. I'd be like, oh, I can't, I can't do that today. Sorry. Diablo ladder's happening. Or season, whatever it is. I've never taken a day off for the release of a game, though. I don't think I've ever done that. I think it comes from, um... When Diablo 3 released, my friends were telling me, you need to take the day off, we're gonna be playing when this releases, you need to take the day off, and I was like, nah, I can't, I need the money. So I didn't take the day off, and what ended up happening was just catastrophic server issues, they couldn't play, and by the time I got home, it still wasn't resolved, it was like, I got home at 10 o'clock at night, and it was still messed up. And it wasn't until the next day where it was all good. So based on that experience, I just, I never took a day off for like the launch of a game. Because typically it came from a place of, oh, we're going to be playing multiplayer. And any game, any multiplayer game, just n no one gets the release correct. So with that, I, I've just never really been inclined to take a day off for a game. You booked a day off to watch the first episode of Critical Role Campaign 2 since it airs at 3 a.m. Man, that's one thing that's kind of intrigued me, is just, like, the whole Dungeons & Dragons thing. I don't know anyone that plays it, or I've never been in the circle of friends of people into it, but, like, I've seen bits and pieces of Critical Role kind of appear on my, uh, my feed. Feeds, I guess. Whatever YouTube feeds. And it's, it's intrigued me. Like, I'm kind of... It seems cool. I just, I guess I've never made the time to kind of get into it. You've never played? <laughs> Fair. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy it if you've never played. But I guess if we're, if we're using the logic of some people, it's like, why are you watching that if you're not playing the game? You're not partaking, why are you watching people sit, sit around and just pretend like they're in a fantasy land? Why are you watching people pretending they live in a fantasy world? Okay, I'm gonna go now. I'm going to go watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians, because that's reality. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just- I'm just invent- I'm just inventing people here at this point, like... I'm just inventing people. Watching professional actors play D&D is like watching a TV show. I know, especially Critical Role, like, there's some talented voice actors in there, so... Voice people. And they make the effort, right? So... I think I just need more nerdy people to hang out with, to be honest. <laughs> That's all. I'll have like a survey you have to take before we hang out. And I'll ask, do you like sports? And if the answer is yeah, yes, eh. That's what the internet's for. Yeah, but I mean it in the sense of, like, maybe my problem is not enough Australians watch me. I can honestly count the number of Australians on, on one hand at this point. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone from where I live that watches me. Aside from, like, the occasional 
uh, family member that pops into the stream. Like, I... My brothers have popped into the stream. I haven't really mentioned that, and a few of my cousins have as well. But, you know, they don't count. A few of your colleagues are nerds, but you never hang out. But that's... I guess that's colleagues. It's different. Like, I definitely had a couple of colleagues that were nerds, but we, we didn't hang out. I guess it's just... The separation of work and personal life I, I truly believe in. I think the problem I had was, like, the circle of friends I had, somehow... I mean, I'm not gonna say it as a negative thing, because I, I don't want to be that guy, right? Like, that's not what I'm about. But I think they kind of came to the conclusion that once they did start a family, or have a family, they can't be nerdy anymore. Like, they can't really play games, or they can't go hang out and do something nerdy. Like, that's it. They're just... parents. Where, do, where else do you meet people these days? You spend so much time at work. Yeah. I know, that's, that's a tough question, isn't it? Unless... You kind of have to put yourself out there and go to some something. Like... I guess I've kind of been having that problem, too. From what I've heard, the way people meet is you just kind of go to an event and then you just have to take a leap, which, yeah, easier said than done, right? But I guess consider this as like in the context of Twitch chat, right? I mean, don't, don't have to answer this. I guess I'm just saying this as a, as a question to answer yourself, but like... When you come to a, str a new stream for the first time and you decide you want to watch that person for a while, like, you get to the point where you get beyond the initial... Oh, okay. Yeah, this is this stream seems cool, right? How long does it take for you to say hello to the streamer? And don't answer it. You don't have to answer it. But I guess it's, it's kind of like... You need to take, I guess, a similar leap in real life if you're meeting someone, or trying to meet new people. Is is It's that. It's the equivalent of, like, coming to a stream and then being like, okay, yeah, this is someone I want to talk to. It's like, you just have to do that, but in real life. And it's not an easy thing to do. You usually don't say hi. That's fair. But yeah, I guess that's that's just it. It's like, if you want to meet people, that's what you have to do, ultimately. There was an interesting Reddit thread that I read. Um, it was in the context of dating. So, not really friendship, but kind of similar. It's like, where do you meet people? Except... So it was from the perspective of like, um, like, not a, not a, not someone, hang on, let me try and phrase, it was from the perspective of someone trying to meet a single guy, who was nerdy, 
So, the thread was, I want to meet a single guy who's nerdy, plays games, just, you know, is, is, a, is a geek, right? Because that's the kind of person they enjoyed. And it kind of intrigued me, because I was like, hmm. And, <laughs> this little, like, the replies to it were pretty much that most, most people in, I guess, that group are working a lot, or they're, like, later just playing games and not really going out to, like, events or something, like a normal person. I'm like, you know what, that makes sense. But the suggestions that came out of that were just, like, go to some kind of event, like, uh, like, PAX or something like that. And then usually they have, like, it's not really an after party, but afterwards sometimes people go hang out and do something. Or, like, if there's a club where some places they do meetups for certain things, right? But some of those are, if you want to find a geeky person, that's the way to do it. I'm not really doing the thread justice, but it was kind of a bit of an eye-opener. You're okay not meeting people, you heard that the worst. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I get it. You, a lot of people are the worst, this is generally true, but like... At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how antisocial or like how comfortable with yourself are, like, I think every person fundamentally at some point will want to, like, be in a room with people. If you want to beat nerds, go to nerd first. Makes sense. Yeah. Basically, the meta is, like, don't go on dating websites, I guess, was the point that they were trying to make. Why do I not have any luck with Riverfish? I feel like I'm wasting my time just by being here. Do I think people meet through Twitch? Yeah, absolutely. I, I know uh, a couple of people that have met their partners through Twitch. Or if you mean friends, then that as well. Someone once that I know described Twitch as like the biggest virtual bar there is. It's a bit different from, like, the perspective of a streamer, but, like, audience member to audience member, it, it does happen. It's just one of those things that you gotta go in and not assuming that that's the way people want to interact, because I think that's creepy. But I think genuine connection can form. I mean, it's kind of like to the same extent where people meet through gaming, right? Like, uh, I have a friend in particular who met his wife through playing WoW. Like, that's how, that's how he met her. So, I think, yeah, Twitch can definitely have that potential. It's in the same realm of things. It's just a bit different if you're a streamer, I guess. Like, there's... 
there's etiquette to follow, in my opinion. Well, not, not, I guess not so, no, so much etiquette. Etiquette's probably the wrong word, but like, it's more, I guess, you, this, this goes more for, I guess, the larger streamers is like, you don't want to get into a position where you're taking advantage of the fact that you're famous to kind of, like, have an imbalance, if that makes sense. I guess all the shit that, like, the bigger streamers are getting into trouble for, because, you know, they're just, they're acting like they're rock stars or something. That's what I mean. Like, I think... If someone is getting to know you as a person, and you're kind of on the equal footing, that's fine. But the moment it becomes a thing where, like, you're effectively... The relationship is, like, fan and superstar... Yeah, I don't know, man. That's... That's probably not gonna end well. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say, in terms of etiquette. It's not so much etiquette, it's just... It's a pitfall. I don't know. I'm... It's it's three AM. I can't I can't articulate this properly. Like a uni professor dating an intern. Yeah, yeah. A supervisor dating um, someone that works for them, right? Because then there's, you know what I mean. It's a it's a power imbalance thing, right? I'm not saying that streamers shouldn't ever date. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all, but it should come from a place of, like, just same playing field that shouldn't ever be, like, a power thing, I guess, if that makes sense. donated that, but that's going to be worth a bit. Look at how much better I'm doing now that I have my headphones plugged in. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'll do that, but I mean, I've been catching the big ones pretty consistently. Anyway, uh, yeah, sorry if I couldn't articulate that properly, but I hope anyone watching, whether now or later, like, tries to appreciate where I was trying to go with that. I don't know. I don't know. I guess if I was to put it this way, I wouldn't ever consider pursuing something where the only reason that person is interested in me is just because I'm a streamer or I am, you know, whatever the fuck my streamer name is. Like, if, if I wasn't that, that big streamer, then there would be no interest whatsoever. That's something that I, I wouldn't pursue. I guess that's, that's my point. And I feel like that's that's something that uh, should be followed. I don't know. Maybe that's a bit of a hot take. Gold digger? No, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to say gold digger. That's not it at all.
Yeah, maybe I shouldn't try to articulate this at 3 in the morning. But... Just... Power imbalance, that's, that's it. It's just something that I, I don't want to be sleazy, that's all. That's what I'm trying to convey. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up. Senpai uwu. <laughs> oh no. That those aura fish. I kind of had a feeling they'd be worth a lot. Yeah, I'll make a mental note not to try and like articulate something deep <laughs> at three in the morning. I, I will not do that in future, because I, I feel like I might not say what I want to say. I want this. Ugh. Hate it when they do that. Hey, where are you going? Come back. wasn't expecting it to be like a first, uh, first bite reel in. Oh my god. <laughs> I've been playing this for three hours. How is, how is that, uh, how is that a thing? Okay, okay, I, I, I need to like, stop. <laughs> That was a cool little... Sorry. <laughs> okay. For the sake of me being able to get sleep chat, I'm gonna wrap it up here. But I do hope, uh, yeah, you've enjoyed the stream today. Went a little bit extra. So, did quite a bit. Um, we can, I, I've hit my goal, so we're good. But yeah, thanks for watching. Especially if you're new to the stream, I hope you did enjoy yourself. I'll be back tomorrow where we'll be continuing Wind Waker. 
and Kirby. And maybe more of this. We'll see how I am for time. But those are the plans for tomorrow. So expect a stream at some point. In the meantime, if you do want to watch more of my stuff, you can find me on YouTube. Just look for this channel over there. Just search for the channel name and you'll find it. I have three of them. One that has past streams, another one that has highlights, and yeah, another one where I'll do the occasional stream over there. So I hope you do check that out. Or you can head to the website, which you can see in the bottom right there. And uh, yeah, to all you people watching on YouTube later, thanks for watching. Hope you did enjoy yourself as always, and I appreciate you all for, uh, yeah, I guess letting me play or whatever, and we all just hang out and chill. It's really a highlight of my week when I, when I do that, so yeah, just want to say thank you. Okay. And on that note, dear chat, I'm going to go get some sleep. But, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day.